How to respond to accusations and insults from a narcissistic husband. Are you married to a narcissist? You don't want a divorce and you want to make it work, your marriage. If you are in a toxic narcissistic relationship that is full of drama, trauma, and chaos, you will want to listen to my video to learn how to respond to them in five different ways. I am an ordained healing deliverance minister with 25 years of experience, including counseling and anxiety coaching for those who want to recover from anxiety issues to live a fulfilled life in Christ and get your life back. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos to help you overcome the toxic relationships and the damage it causes, such as anxiety, stress, and depression. I'm sure you have heard of the term love bombing, which refers to intense emotions, affections, and admirations from someone who gives to another person in a relationship. Narcissists, narcissists can be very charming and charismatic. Maybe your narcissistic husband fooled you when dating him since he used flattery and intense affections towards you. He seemed like the real thing, but dangerously manipulates you to believe he loves you. He may have seemed perfect. You thought he was amazing. Unfortunately, it was all a manipulation for him to get you, get this gratification from you. You may have helped him to look good, stroking him that fed his ego. Did you know the Bible refers to flattery in scripture as the following? Proverbs 26, 28, a lying tongue hates those it hurts and if has a flattering mouth works ruins. Psalm 78, 36, 37, no, nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues, for their heart was not right with him, neither were there steadfast in his covenant. Psalms 12, 2 and 3. Neighbors lie to each other, speaking with flattering lips and deceitful hearts. Maybe the Lord cut off their flattering lips and silenced their boastful tongues. Do you notice a pattern during your relationship that every time you pulled away, he flattered you to win your heart. And then, wham, hits you again with belittling, accusing, or insulting you. Can you relate? In Psalms 55, 21, his speech is smoother than butter, but there is a war in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, but they are like swords ready to attack. Can you relate? Narcissists will project their stuff onto you of what they're doing themselves. They may even say you have a problem when it's their problem. Narcissists lie, manipulate, and cheat. So remember, their projected accusation is a confession to you. So don't give in to their projected accusations. If you plan to stay with your narcissistic husband, you must remember, you cannot change them, but you must change yourself to adapt to stay safe, meaning get strong in your identity in Christ to survive this relationship because they love to get under your skin. They want to control and isolate you. Basically, they want you to see them as number one in your life. I'm sure you're frustrated, beaten down emotionally, and feel as though you lost your identity. Then feeling stressed, having to walk on eggs, not knowing the next attack will come. Do you get anxious around them? Living with a narcissistic relationship of emotional abuse can erode self-esteem, confidence, then suffer from the anxiety and depression. That is what many narcissistic men do to women. You love him, but you hate him at the same time, but you cannot leave the relationship for whatever reason, but there is hope for you. The only time you would suggest leaving if he becomes 
violent or threatens your life. What makes narcissistic people? They suffer from rejection, real or imagined, and decide no one's going to reject or put them down again. Because of their rejection, they have self-hatred, so they are tormented souls that love company. According to psychologists, narcissism is a very insecure p- person that inflates themselves by putting other people down to feel better about themselves. They have an inflated sense of self-importance. Symptoms include an excessive need for admiration, disregard for others' feelings, and an inability to handle criticism, and a sense of entitlement. The sad thing is their condition is chronic, lifelong, and cannot be cured only if they recognize it and yield to God. When you look at Saul, he was narcissistic and was cursed and died at the end. Isaiah 57, 21, there is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Why do narcissistic love to falsely accuse you? As you know, your husband deceived you and you really don't want to stroke him anymore. They notice it. When that happens, then they falsely accuse you to react. Then they will use the reaction against you and put you down, insult you, attack your Christianity, and make you feel like you're the crazy one. Narcissistic men are like interrogators and will continue to throw out wild accusations at you. The accusation is one of the many toolboxes to criticize, belittle you so that they feel better or gaslight you into second guessing yourself. It feeds their ego. Narcissistic people do not receive criticism very well and make you pay back. Through accusation, silent treatment, and other forms of manipulation, my next teaching will be how to deal with the silent treatment. Five ways and how do you respond to them in a godly way. Number one, when your husband accuses you, you will be tempted to defend yourself. Flash, lash out, back in anger. This is the reaction they want from you to make you look bad, especially if there's other people around. When they cannot get a reaction from you, they will try to put the guilt on you, and which is another way to manipulate you. They want to get inside your head. Remember, Narciss has a lot of tools to get under your skin. Don't fall for that trap. Stand on your power and know this is a trap. Fight the guilt. Protect your heart. Imagine putting a wall around your heart to not Receive the accusation, the lies, the guilt he tries to put on you. Visualize a trash can and throw their evil words into that trash. Don't receive it into your heart. It's not your fault. They're the problem. Proverbs 14, 29. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. Proverbs 15. One, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Two, you must show confidence with no motion when answering back. Be matter of fact with them. They want to attack and show off your bad side and feed their ego. They think they are better and superior to you. Remember, they will keep pushing at you to get a reaction. James 1 19. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Number three, ask questions. For example, they are accusing you of cheating on them. Example, why are you accusing me of cheating on you? Then ask them, are you cheating on me? Or why do you think I'm cheating on you? They should say no or have a reason. But if they blow up on you and twist it, that is a dead giveaway of guilt. If they twist your words, pull them back to the point of discussion. Say, why are you accusing me of cheating? You need to stand in your truth and take 
your power back. Proverbs 15, 18. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he who's slow to anger quiets the contention. Four, put boundaries on him. Do everything you can to stay calm and collect. Stand on your ground. Take care of yourself by excusing yourself to the bathroom, take a walk, or drive. But put boundaries on them. If they get angry, yell. That is where you put the boundaries. That you refuse to talk to them or discuss anything while they are yelling. Ecclesiastes 7.9 Be not quick in your spirit to become angry. For anger lodges in the heart of fools. Five. If your narcissistic husband thinks there's room here to discuss a debate or throwing out accusations, continue to placate them and say things like, I'm unfortunate that you feel this way. Depending on their accusation, this isn't up for discussion. Or, I'm not going to argue with you. Or, or if that's what you believe, I don't care. If you feel that way, but keep it to yourself. Narcissus must always be right and don't want to hear anything that you have to contribute into the discussion. So say, I hear what you're saying, but I just don't agree. Or I have, think about it for a while and end the conversation. You cannot win with a narcissistic person. Let's say it is a matter of opinion. Who cares? If they're wrong, if it doesn't affect anyone else. Example, fighting over scripture. It is not worth it. You don't have to prove yourself. Just validate them and saying, I hear what you're saying, but I just don't agree. And if you want to believe it, I'm fine with it. Then walk away. If they project something onto you, such as you're a liar, then say, if that's what you want to believe, fine. God knows the truth and end it and walk away. Ecclesiastes 10.4. If the anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your place for calmness will lay great offense to rest. On a side note, if you are thinking of leaving, make sure you document everything on their stuff so that you have an upper hand. Don't let them know you are documenting Narcissus will lie and do anything to make you look bad in the courts. Living with a narcissist is being on the ball all the time. Also, when talking to a narcissist about something they need to do around the house, talk in third person with them. Say something nice about them. Then ask, why? Because they have filters. Everything they hear is accusation and rejection to them, even when it's not. Make sure they do not redirect the questions. While married to a narcissist person, get support help from family and friends. Get counseling to help you survive a narcissist husband. If you suffer from anxiety from it, I do a 90-day program to help you break the cycle of anxiety, anxious negative thoughts. If you're interested in learning more, I would love to talk to you and see if I can help you. So go to TeresaMorin.com, schedule a strategy call. I am running a 50% off New Year's special. I would love to talk to you and help you get free. Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. 1 Timothy 2.8, I desire then that every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger and quarreling. There will be times when you will slip and fight with him. Remember to repent to God, forgive yourself, do self-care. Again, make sure you sign up for my channel. I would like for, to work with you as well if you suffer with that negative thought patterns or anxiety. I want to help you regain your foot back to move forward in life and have victory in your life again. Amen. Mm -hmm.